Yo guys, what's up? Chrisarel here. In the last video, we finished building the UI for our crafting window. Today, we are going to implement the scripts for its functionality. In this video, I'm going to be trying something of a different format, where the scripts have already been made, and I'm just going to run you through what has been done, instead of making the scripts as we go through the video. Please let me know your opinion about this in the comments below. Any and all feedback is extremely appreciated. We're gonna need three new scripts. One for the crafting window, another one for the crafting recipe UI, and yet another for the item slots inside the crafting recipe UI. Let's start at the bottom by creating the script for the item slot. But you might be wondering, why would we need a new script for item slots when we already have our original item slot script? The first reason is that these slots don't support drag and drop. They are basically just for viewing and not for interacting, from the player's perspective. And on that front, you might say, well, we can just not use the drag and drop events. And you would be right. But let me give you another, more practical reason why we need to create a new item slot script. All of these objects are inside a scroll rect, which uses drag events to allow us to scroll through it. And as you might remember, our item slot class implements all of these Unity events for dragging. Well, when we have a game object with a script on it that implements any of the drag events, they will intercept those events, preventing them from reaching the scroll rect. Which means that if we had that script in these item slots right here, they would intercept the drag event and it would not reach the scroll rect and it would be impossible for us to scroll unless we clicked on the empty space between the slots, which is extremely inconvenient. And in fact, that would happen even if we were not using those events in our own code, just by virtue of the fact that the class implements these interfaces right here. So what we need to do, which you might already be guessing by the names of the classes that you're seeing on the screen, is essentially we need to split our original item slot class into two classes. So I created the base item slot class, which has pretty much everything that we already had in our original item slot, except for all the things that are related to dragging. We implement all the interfaces, except for the drag and drop ones. We have the image, amount text, all of the events, except for the ones related to dragging. And everything else here is exactly the same. There's just one difference that is small but very important, is that the canReceiveItem method is declared as virtual and it returns false. As for the item slot, it just has, well, everything else. Everything that is related to dragging, the interfaces, the events, the drag color, and all of the methods down here. But in this class, the canReceiveItem method, we override it to return true. And that's all we need to create our quote-unquote new base item slot script. The only other thing that we need to do that might be a little bit tedious is change all of our events to use the base item slot class instead of our original item slot class. In here, in the item slot, in the inventory, in the character, all of the equip, unequip, show tooltip, and so on and so forth. I have two suggestions to make this process a little bit less painful. The first one is reminding you that you can always download the latest version of the project from the repository, linked down below in the description and in the pinned comment. And the second suggestion, if you prefer following the tutorials and doing everything by yourself, is to go into your original item slot class and choosing the rename option from the right click menu and renaming this to base item slot. This will instantly change every usage of item slot into base item slot, saving you a ton of manual renaming. And after you do that, you can create the item slot class again and splitting the classes as we just covered. After you do that, make sure that the names of the scripts in your project folders match the names of the classes that they belong to. And after that, go into the inventory and change the item slots array back into item slot instead of base item slot. 
and do the same thing for the equipment slot class, making it extend from item slot instead of base item slot. By doing it this way, we manually renamed three places instead of like, I don't know, 50 or something. Now that we have our new item slot script, we need to come and add it to the crafting recipe UI. But first, we need to add the text object that we forgot to add in the last video. So selecting all of the item slots, we can just right click to add a new UI text object. And now we can set the properties for this text object, like so. After we're done with that, we need to select our item slots once again and add the base item slot script to them. We only need to do this once for one of our crafting recipe UIs. You can even delete all of the rest because now we are going to be making this a prefab by dragging it to our project folders. And now we can take a look at the new script for the crafting recipe UI. For this script, we're going to need references to the arrow parent and to all of the item slots that are children of this game object. We're also going to need an item container as a public variable, and the item container class is new. This is also a change that I made for this video, and it works similarly to the split that we did between item slot and base item slot, in that I split the inventory class into item container and inventory. So now the inventory extends from item container, and it has pretty much everything that you remember it having, except for the item slots array, they're no longer here, and everything after the set starting items method is also no longer here. All of those things have been moved to the item container base class. This item container class is an abstract class, meaning we can't create instances of it, or actually, in this case, that it's a mono behavior. We cannot attach it to any game objects, and it implements the iItemContainer interface, and it has all of the other familiar things that you might recognize from the inventory class. It has the item slots array, and then it has all of the methods from the item container interface. Add item, remove item, is full, item count. All of these methods have been made virtual, so that you can override them in subclasses if you need to. So the purpose of splitting the inventory into the item container class is that I'm anticipating all of these methods inside the item container are going to be useful in a variety of different classes and they are probably going to always have the same or very very similar implementation as this. Let's say for example you wanted to implement a bank or a stash, whatever you want to call it, for items or of your character, then the functionality is probably going to be exactly the same as this. So then you just need to create a bank class and extend from item container and you pretty much don't have to do anything else in order to be able to add items to it. Another very important reason to have this class is that interfaces are not serializable by Unity, meaning they won't show up in Unity Inspector. What this means in practice is that, let's say in the crafting recipe UI, we wanted to have a generic item container here, and before we had the item container abstract class, we would have to use the interface, and this would allow us to craft items directly into some other item container and not specifically the inventory, but this would have a pretty big downside. You could assign this variable through code, that's fine, but it wouldn't show up in the Unity Inspector. So to make this as versatile as possible, Having an actual class that implements that interface is pretty useful for us. So, other than that, we also have a public property of type crafting recipe with a corresponding backing field. In the getter, we just return the private variable, and in the setter, we're gonna call this method that we're gonna take a look at in just a second. After that, we have pointer enter and pointer exit events. This will allow us to answer to mouse overs to display the tooltip. And we don't have any of the drag events or anything of the sort because these slots are basically quote unquote read only. Then in the onValidate method, we get components and children of type base item slots to get all of the item slots into this array. In the start method, 
we're going to add listeners to all of the events in the item slots. Then we also have a method that's going to run when we click the craft button. This is going to first check if the crafting recipe and the item container are not null. Then it's going to check if it can craft the recipe based on the materials contained inside the item container. If we cannot craft it, we are going to do a debug log error saying you don't have the required materials. Otherwise, we are going to check if the item container is full. And if it is, we are going to say that inventory is full as a debug log error. And if all of these checks have passed successfully, then we are finally going to craft the recipe. Now, for the set crafting recipe method, we are going to receive as an input parameter the new crafting recipe that we want to assign to this crafting recipe UI object. And the first thing that we have to do is assign it to our own private variable. After that, we are going to check if it's not null, because if it is, if we assigned null to the crafting recipe of this object, then we are instantly going to deactivate this game object. If it's not null, then we are going to have to go through all of our item slots and assign the crafting materials and the results to them. Visually, we want our crafting recipe UI to show us all of the materials, then an arrow, and then all of the results. And that's exactly what we're doing right here. We are starting at slot index 0. Then we are going to go through all of the materials in the crafting recipe and assigning them to each of the slots. When we're done, we return the slot index where we ended at. And then we're going to tell the arrow parent to be placed at that slot index in Unity's hierarchy. And then we finish setting the rest of the slots for the results. But let's take a deeper look at the set slots method. First of all, we receive as an input parameter an item amount list of type iList. And this is a bit more versatile because this allows you to receive either an actual list or an array because they both implement this interface. Then we also receive the slot index where we want to start at. And we loop through the item amount list that we received as the first input parameter. And after each iteration of the loop, we are going to increase the i variable as we normally do. But very important detail, we're also going to increase the slot index variable that we received as the second input parameter. Then we just get the item amount at the current index into a variable and the item slot at the current slot index into a variable. We set the item in the item slot to the item in the item amount. The amount of the item, we do the same thing. And then we enable the parent of this game object. Remember that these slots are parented to another game object, which is inside a horizontal layout group. And that is the one that we want to activate or deactivate. And that's why we need to get the parent of the item slot. When we're done with this for loop, we're going to return the slot index to communicate to the calling method the slot index where we ended at. At the end of this process right here, if we still have more item slots than we have crafting recipe materials or results, then we are going to loop through all of them starting at the last slot where we ended at, and we're going to disable those game objects. Lastly, we are going to enable the crafting recipe UI object. Now, back in Unity, we need to add the crafting recipe UI script to the crafting recipe UI game object. We're going to need to tell it where the arrow parent is. The item slots, we're already getting them automatically in onValidate. And for the rest of the variables, we don't need to worry about it because we are going to be setting them from yet another script. We also need to set the onClick method for the craft button. We just drag the crafting recipe UI object and then we choose crafting recipe UI on craft button click. Don't forget to hit the apply button to apply the changes to your prefab. So this episode is already running pretty long and we've already made quite a bit of progress in it. So I'm just going to cut it here and we'll continue this in the next one. Thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you next time.